welcome once again another video from sql maestros we will talk about sql server monitoring it's a huge subject and there are so many innovative tips and techniques on how you can monitor sql server today we are going to talk about monitoring waiting tasks when you send your request to sql server it needs resources like cpu memory io it could be wanting access to a data page which is logged by another user by another transaction and it, now it needs to wait for that so there's so many resources that your query needs and it could be waiting for one or more resources whenever your workload is waiting sql server thankfully records that and you can monitor that real time or you can monitor it after some time also which is like post execution analysis we will get into that later today we are going to talk about real time monitoring now when you are monitoring waiting tasks my demo today is not about just simply going and running select star from sys dmos waiting task and and you're seeing your tasks uh, your uh, requests what are they really waiting for i'm going to go one step beyond that and uh, my intention is to show you some gotcha some caveats about monitoring those waiting tasks now we are going to group all the requests uh, in what we call as wait groups so we going to, we are trying to see how many tasks are waiting on a specific wait type this will give you a sense of uh, clarity as to where there could be potential bottlenecks and it may not be very conclusive but it will at least give you hint and bring you closer to where the root cause of that general slowness could be in your server now this kind of helps when there is general slowness in sql server not specific to not specifically a problem with a given query but overall things are not running as fast as they should be now when you are grouping these tasks with respect to their wait type there are certain issues because some wait types do not show up in waiting tasks and then when you are looking at waiting tasks it also shows you background processes and you want to filter only on user processes okay enough of talking let's get down to the demos now when i uh, look into select star from sys dm os waiting task first let's go and execute this now with this dmv you are able to monitor on real time basis all the tasks that are waiting on a specific wait type and you can see some of these wait types here and right now if you look at the number of rows these are like 46 rows there 46 records and i can tell you most most of them are background processes because this is a quasine sql server there's really nothing running right now now if i take this query and i just try to write it a little differently and group on wait type let's go and execute this you can see that there are 17 tasks that are currently waiting on dispatcher queue semaphore there are two of them waiting on xyz there are two of them waiting on something else now this is interesting this this summarized information brings me closer to where there, there are there, there are more bottlenecks where there are more waits happening but now this data this analysis is incomplete uh, and there are a few uh, gochas here the first issue here right now is i am looking at this data and this is these are all background threads i need to filter this on user processes unfortunately in the waiting task dmv there's no way to filter that so i need to join that with let's say session dmv and filter on user process that is one the second is there are there's a wait type called thread pool now thread pool wait type will show up in waiting tasks but when i join with session dmv and i'm trying to filter on user processes unfortunately thread pool will not show up there because thread pool does not have a session i'm going to join the waiting task with the session dmv and the common attribute is going to be session id but thread pool wait means that your thread has not uh, your request has has not been assigned a thread which means it does not even have a session id so it's just going to get excluded that's one of the challenges the second challenge is there is a wait type called sos scheduler yield now sos scheduler yield is just not showing up in waiting task it doesn't show up because it's not essentially waiting for a resource 
SOS scheduler yield simply means that you have a long running thread which um, which runs for four millisecond on on the scheduler and then backs off. So that four millisecond is the quantum. So it runs for four milliseconds and then it leaves the CPU and goes back into the CPU queue again and when it goes back to the cpu queue again and is waiting for its turn it's waiting on sos scheduler yield so sos scheduler yield here doesn't really mean waiting for a resource and that's why it's not really a bottleneck per se and that's why it does not show up in waiting tasks so if you see that while i see this output as really a, a great summarized information i need to take care of these two issues let me go one step further and run some workload and see how we can circumvent this. So let's go back to this folder and let's simulate SQL Server. I'm going to fire 100 users who are going to do something or the other, and then they will be waiting on um, different wait types and there will be thread pool and scheduler yield and we're going to track all of that. Now, <clears throat> workload is running. If you go into waiting tasks, you can see that there are a lot of these folks waiting on thread pool, but they do not have a session ID. As I mentioned, uh, these are requests for which a thread has not been assigned and that's why they don't have a session ID. We have 97 rows here. Let's go and run this once more. And um, yeah, you, you're seeing close to 100 records there. Now, if I scroll down and what if I, this is problem number one, right? Thread pool. And I'm trying to join with session DMV and I filter on is user process equals to one because I want to filter out the background processes. If I go and run this, the problem is I will, Let's run this a couple of times to get some output. You will see a few wait types. Now, if you see CLR, manual event, async network IO, now these are threads, our user work workload, they're waiting, like three of them are waiting on this wait type, there's one waiting on async network IO. Thread pool is not showing up here. There are many of them waiting on thread pool. They're not showing up. That's problem number one. So we need to get rid of that. Uh, we need to circumvent that. Problem number two is SOS scheduler yield. So let's go and run this dim exec request DMV. And what I want to show you here is that, let's go to last wait type. There were lot of, lot of, where, where, where? Oh, there are, there were many threads that were many requests were waiting on SOS scheduler yield. And SOS scheduler yield does not show up in waiting tasks, which means if I go back and run this, group query here, the summarized query here, um, it won't really show up um, SOS scheduler yield. Thread pool is being shown here, but I need to get rid of the background threads. So if I join this with session DMV and because thread pool weights do not have a session ID, even this gets excluded. So SOS scheduler yield is not being shown. Thread pool will also get missed out. So you can see there are 41 threads that are waiting on thread pool, but the moment I join this with session ID to filter out the background processes, you will see nothing coming up and not even thread pool. There will, uh, others should come up a few uh, depending on how dynamically our workloads are running, like for example, this one, but thread pool doesn't show up and neither does SOS scheduler yield because it is not in waiting task. So I hope you get where the problem is. I am trying to monitor on a real time basis. What are my threads waiting on? And if I just simply do a select star from waiting tasks, while it can show thread pool, it won't sh show SOS scheduler yield. It will show up a lot of background threads, which I need to filter out. And simply a select from the DMV can give me lot of data, hundreds of records. So I need to kind of summarize just to get a sense of where there could be potential bottlenecks. It gets me closer to where the problem is. So how do we overcome this? One potential solution here could be that I take this query, which gives me what my tasks are waiting on, minus thread pool, minus SOS scheduler yield. This is the one that we were running, uh, we ran earlier, where we actually saw a CLR manual event and there were other uh, weight types that were coming in. This can be clubbed with, we can union all with waiting tasks, which is an hour requests that are waiting on thread pool. So I could run this one, join the data. So this would give me thread pool. And then I could union that result set with a third one. And from dim exec request, where I put last weight type as SOS scheduler yield. So this could give me a count of SOS scheduler yield. And you can see there were 64 out there. 
so i can join all three of them to kind of get a sense of how many threads the first one gives me how many threads are waiting on a lot of different weight types other than thread pool and sos scheduler yield second one gives me thread pool and the third one gives me sos scheduler yield so let's go and run this and now what you can see memory allocation extension that's to do with buffer pool so i have one thread waiting on that thread there are 36 threads waiting on thread pool which means there are a lot of long running threads and uh, and a lot of long running requests and uh, they are preventing many requests uh, from getting a thread assigned to them. And then there are a lot of other threads that are just long running. You know, they're running, they're going to the CPU, about 57 of them approximately going to the CPU, completing their four millisecond quantum and then coming back again. Let's run this a couple of times to just kind of see how things are shaping up. And, and you can see this uh, dynamic output which keeps changing as the requests are running. Now let's terminate all of this. Control C there, terminate the batch, yes. So we have closed off everything now. Now observe what, what's going to happen. We would expect thread pool to go away. We would expect SOS scheduler yield also to go away probably and, um, and maybe let's see what else is waiting on. Now no workloads, no user workloads. So you just have one count of SOS scheduler yield which is fine. Now remember here we are actually not in the second and the third, as I said, it's approximate numbers, a slight catch. In the second part of the query, this one, and the third part of the query, we are not filtering on user processes. You know, we can always modify this further and make it slightly more accurate, but right now approximate numbers are good enough for us to get a sense of where there are potential weights and bottlenecks. Okay, so just, one tip and technique here about monitoring waiting tasks on a real-time basis but r rather than just looking at raw data and hundreds of records we're just trying to group them to get a sense of how many tasks are waiting on which weight type and including thread pool and sos scheduler yield if you're one of those who have been doing something like this you might be wondering why sos scheduler yield is not showing up and why thread pool does not have a session id in case you were joining waiting task dmv with a lot of other system catalogs and dmvs hope this video gives you that clarity okay another tip another weapon in your arsenal when you're monitoring sql server hope you like it if you like the content give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.